Just in case you were wondering uh, what the deal was with the sled dogs in Greenland. Sled dog city. Sled dog city. Sled dog city nights. Soul Pancake presents An Idiot's Guide to Climate Change. Hi. My name is Rain, I'm an actor, and I care about the planet, so I'm going to Greenland with some scientists to witness firsthand the melting of the glaciers and learn some hard science about climate change. I pray this makes even a little bit of difference. Also, don't be an idiot. Rain. Going to Alulasat. I'm excited to meet some Greenlanders, meet some glaciers, and uh, solve this entire uh, climate change problem. Give me a couple weeks, I'll, I'll get it figured out. Time to make love to a glacier. Morning, Ilusat. Here we are at the very top of Greenland, but I'm afraid it's melting. Sometimes you see a vista that just completely blows your mind. And I know that this is kind of a informative, travel log, vloggy documentary of my learning about climate change. But I have to show you guys this. It's unbelievable. This is where the Greenland ice sheet that covers almost the totality of Greenland spills out into the ocean, pouring out mammoth icebergs. And the Greenland ice sheet has been there for hundreds of thousands of years and is now melting. It'll be a great gain for the oceans of the world, but that will also suck for humanity. Over the next few days, we'll visit remote glaciers by boat and helicopter with some actual scientists. But first, to learn from a local, I speak to Karen from Greenland. Be camera rolls. So this is one of the most amazing things I've absolutely ever seen in my life. Can you tell me what it is we're looking at here? We are at the Ilulissat Ice Fjord. The Ilulissat Ice Fjord is about 70 kilometers long. And that means that the glacier front is 70 kilometers from here. So um, there's a giant ass glacier 70 kilometers up that way. Yes. And it's huge, huge icebergs that falls off. So it produces these huge icebergs out here. So this is an iceberg graveyard, kind of. Have you noticed negative impacts from climate change? Yes. The glacier front has retreated around 25 kilometers. Wow. So it's shrinking. Yes. We used to have sea ice, and now we don't have sea ice. So the weather is not as stable as it used to be. There's a lot more wind. We also can see it in the glaciers. They're active all the time. Oh, this is crazy. I'm hearing a glacier collapse out there. That was amazing, that sound. That's the calving of an iceberg tumbling into the ocean. It sounded like an avalanche. Next stop, find that glacier. But first... Just in case you were wondering uh, what the deal was with the sled dogs in Greenland. There are literally hundreds chained up all over the hillsides just howling for dinner time. Sled dog city! Sled dog city! Sled dog city nights! Good morning, Greenland. How you doing? We're gonna get on a boat. We're gonna sail out to some of these icebergs and get into some uh, nitty gritty facts about climate change and what's happening in the Arctic specifically and why it matters to know about the Arctic if we live down in the United States or wherever the hell you're watching this stupid video. So uh, here we go. But first, we have to sail past those enormous oil tanks and out into the wild horizon. We're uh, headed right into the icebergs. I know exactly how Leonardo DiCaprio felt. These 
cliffs are like the most ancient things I've ever seen. Totally Game of Thrones back in there. Look at all this brash ice floating around. Winter's coming. Winter is coming. Okay, I've seen some crazy in my days, but man, oh man, I've never seen anything like this. This is literally where a glacier meets the ocean. Ground zero for climate change. So, uh, David, uh, Dr. David Hick, not hike, is that right? I can take a hike, but David Hick, yes. If you tell any more jokes, I'm throwing you off this boat. It sounds like thunder in the background, like through this interview, but what is it that we're actually hearing? We are talking to a glacier. It's talking to us. It's telling us that its journey from the center of Greenland into the ocean is nearly complete. Can you distill for me, because I'm kind of a climate change dummy, can you kind of break it down for me? What are some, some chief salient points? So the first thing to remember is for Earth, for our whole planet, it's a climate system. So all the parts are connected, which means what happens in the Arctic doesn't stay in the Arctic. Okay. We think of the Arctic as being a cold place, but that helps to regulate the climate on the rest of the planet. And as the Arctic warms up, that cold, the balance between cold and warm gets mm -hmm. kind of blurry. So one example of that is the jet stream that goes around the Northern Hemisphere. Okay. And as it warms up in the Arctic, you start to see uh, cold air coming further south and warm air going further north and you get crazy weather systems. We're seeing heat waves that we're not prepared for, extreme weather events, uh, potential for an increase in things like uh, hurricanes or tornadoes. So those one in a hundred year events are going to become one in a decade events that mm -hmm. will then become annual events. And we, we're not prepared for that. I and mean, there's no uncertainty around the cause and effect of climate change. Uh, we're burning fossil fuels, that's contributing to an increase in greenhouse gases, and that's warming the planet. How warm is it getting in the Arctic? Right, so. Whoa! Oh, we, go. we got a big wave, too, from that crashing ice. Globally, the, the Arctic's about two degrees warmer than the warming we've seen in the rest of the planet. So we've seen warming in the rest of the planet, but we have, right. the Arctic is even warmer. Even warmer. Than Why is that? Partly because of this phase transition from frozen to, to thawed. Okay. And partly because the surface of, of snow and ice is getting darker. The transport of what we call black carbon, it's a type of pollution that, that's a result of, say, forest fires or burning coal or oil or gas or uh, diesel fuel, and it's fine particulate matter that accumulates in the Arctic. And so if you look around us, look at the surface of some of the glaciers behind us, they're, uh, they're dark on top. And part of that is just the seasonal melting. And part of it is this accumulation of, of, uh, of soot. Black, so black, we, black we wouldn't have seen that 100 years ago? Not to the same extent. I mean, there's always been forest fires and you know people right. have burned wood, and, but there's, there's a lot more of that happening right, right. now. What this carbon accumulation contributes to is called the albedo effect. And all that means is that from a, a value of one would be a bright white surface and reflects all of the solar radiation back yep. into space. And a value of zero would be like an asphalt highway. All of that solar Soaks radiation just yeah. gets soaked mm -hmm. in and it doesn't reflect anything back. So the darker the surface area, the more it warms and the faster it melts. Why it, don't we make white highways? Well, we should. We should have white roofs and we should have white highways. We should just reduce the, uh, we can reflect more of that radiation back. Wow. Yeah. Okay. That's a good place to start. But just, here, uh, there we are, kids. Uh, paint, your, uh, paint your roof white. Even better have a living roof because plants and vegetation do an even better job than just a, a oh, flat surface. Okay. Right. Great. But, uh, but the Arctic bait is getting darker and we've been progressively losing ice. It's uh, pretty much at a tipping point now where we predict by uh, the middle of next decade, the Arctic Ocean could be season seasonally ice-free, almost entirely melted. The other thing is you have a shift from an ice-covered ecosystem to an open water pelagic ecosystem. That changes the whole food web. So things like polar bears or seals uh, that rely on sea ice, yeah. they're not there anymore. There's also an entire ecosystem of small organisms, microorganisms, algae, 
zooplankton that live on the bottom of sea ice. No yeah. ice means no plankton under the ice means certain fish don't get to eat that plankton, may die or go away, and right. then seals that eat those fish right. may die or go away, and then polar bears that eat those seals may die or go away. That's right. So the whole system will shift to something new. So polar bears and seals are um, They need sea ice. It's ancient, powerful, beautiful, and as we gather more and more facts about what's going on, it's also tragic. I feel like the host of a travel channel show. But I, I'd, I'm pretty good. I'd, I'm pretty good at it. I think I'd be good. I think I'd be good. So we're crunching through the Arctic ice on our way to this little settlement. We're uh, kind of stuck on a harbor in Greenland. Keep your thoughts and prayers coming, please. Thoughts and prayers coming. And a boat. You know what this glacier calls for? Coming up on An Idiot's Guide to Climate Change. Looks like we're here. Kangalooswak. You just need that slew. Kangalooswak. What is happening in the Arctic is affecting all of our lives. Droughts that we've had. Which caused the forest fires. Which caused the forest fires. There it is, a big red bird. How much more of the science do you want? We want to go to Mount of the Science. Okay. I'm just a dumb actor. What do I know? Is there some kind of cafe where we're landing? I feel like I'm expecting the Mars rover to uh, roll over the horizon. I truly feel like I'm on another planet. 